recording. Yes, it's recording. Yeah. 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 in this life or as a person who is passing by. And that was the hadith of Ibn Umar. We also took the hadith of Abu Huraira. <coughs> After that, Ta'isa <coughs> Abdi Dinar wa Durham wa Qatila wa khamisa wa madha wa ghayri dhalik mentioned different things different narrations the prophet mentioned different things and the word we said ta'isa the ulama they said it means halak means destruction or well, that a person will <clears throat> be destroyed. A person will be destroyed or destruction will meet them as a result of what the Prophet Sallam is about to mention after the word Ta'isa. <clears throat> Abdu Dinar wa Dirham. Ulama, they said, Dinar is from yani, gold. Dirham is from silver. Currency that Rasulullah was talking about when he mentioned <coughs> Abdul Dinar with Dirham. <coughs> Some word it says Khatifa, which Sheikh what they mean. It said this means um, um, Farash. Yani, meaning like things that you have to use in the household, like carpets and bedding, and some people use this word generally for furniture. So sell them also in another word, and he said, kamis, <coughs> meaning you know, shirt, clothing. And another word, and he mentioned um, <coughs> kamila, expensive clothing. All of this, the Prophet he mentioned before those words, abdu. And Sheikh what they mean, he said that what the Prophet intended here was not that the person is going to yani, yeshut the yurka, yani, le dinar with your ham. The Prophet didn't mean that the person is going to take some gold and silver currencies and make prostration or make record to it. That wasn't the intended meaning of the He said, Abdul. I shake what they mean, he said, but what's meant here is that that person, as the Prophet he said, in Rabbi, if he gets what he's <coughs> striving for, that is the money, the clothes, the worldly things, <coughs> those things that the Prophet mentioned and the likes of them in this hadith, then he's pleased. Wallam yatu lam and if he doesn't, if he doesn't, uh, uh, if he doesn't get it, then he's displeased. And so that last part is very primitive to understanding the first part of the hadith where the Prophet said, Ta'isa Abdul Dinar Dirham to the end of the hadith. Because here, Sheikh, what they mean is, is, is making clear, don't misunderstand. Don't think the Prophet is saying somebody is worshiping, meaning prostrating and bowing. But what's meant here is that that person in his heart, that person in, 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 in his everyday thinking, ideas, in his wishes, in his, uh, uh, um, his movement, everything about him becomes consumed by those things. So what he said, the word about it here means milk. 
that that person, his heart will be owned by those things. And that's why if he finds it, if she finds it, well, they, they, they find pleasure and contentment, happiness. If they don't achieve it, if they don't get it, they, they don't find it, then they get the opposite. Disgusted, dismay, they're ruined. They, 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 you know, become, as Sheikh Uthameen also said, angry. And the reason for Selim described that as a worship because that thing is controlling you. This is the essence. This is the real servitude when something controls you like that. The only thing, the only one that's supposed to control you like that is your Lord. When you think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you hear the name of Allah, when you read ayat, or you hear ayat, you hear hadith, this is supposed to be your navigation system. This is the thing that should bring you happiness. This is the thing that should bring you contentment. And that's what Prophet Sallam even when something happened that he didn't like, he used to say, Alhamdulillahi ala kulli halin. We praise in Allah, we give in Allah his, his due right in all circumstances. Why? Because this is the epitome of worship. And this is the tail end of what Prophet said in the Hadith of Jibreel. Yani, wa an tu'minu bi ma'adha bi qadri khayrihi wa sharrih. That the person believe in the good and the bad of what Allah decreed. That the person believes in the good and the bad of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed. And part of that belief is that when something reaches you of calamity, when something does not go your way, when you can't achieve something of this worldly life, that you restrain yourself from acting out. That you restrain yourself from feelings and emotions inwardly and outwardly that shows displeasure with Allah Tabaraku wa ta'ala and his decree. And this is why the Shaykh he said, This is yani, this is the essence of worship when something controls you like that. If you get it, you're on top of the world. If you don't get it, you crash. SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. So this was the last part of the, the hadith uh, that the Prophet mentioned. If you obtain what? Yani Abdul Dinaw Dirham. You know, the, 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 those things that you become a servant to, meaning you do anything for those objects unconditionally. You chase it, you get it, you want more, whatever it desires from you. You submit. And so this is a concept, like Sheikh Wataymin, he said, it becomes your ideology, your movement, how you feel, all of the things inwardly and outwardly. And this was the hadith that <clears throat> was the narration of Abu Huraira, Rabbi Allah ta'ala anhu. The next hadith, a hadith of Ibn Umar, قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم من تشبه بقوم فهو منهم. This hadith, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. Ibn Umar, he said, the Prophet he said, whosoever imitates the people, man tashabbaha bi men, whoever imitates the people, man, you feed the Ramon. This is general. No one is excluded from this hadith. But the Prophet said, man. Man here in Arabic means whosoever. Whether it's male, female, rich, poor, educated, layman, Arab, non-Arab, tall, short, it's all inclusive. Man tashabbaha bi qawmin, wa huwa min. Whosoever imitates the people, then he's of them. 
<coughs> this hadith of the Prophet Sallam, Akhwajhu Abi Dawood, it comes in the collection of Imam Abi Dawood and others. This hadith, before we start talking about it, the last part, for who are minhum, he's from amongst them. It's similar, like the Prophet Sallam, he mentions in a lot of hadith, Laysa minna, he's not from amongst us. Some people, they understand these phrases to mean that you are totally not from amongst the Muslims, and those hadith of the Prophet said, Falaysa minna, he's not from amongst us. Likewise, some people understand this particular hadith, for who are men, he's from amongst them, to be that the person is 100% from amongst those people. And so the ulama, they talked about it based on the level of tashabbu. Hasaba, yani al 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 ahwal, al hal, tashabba. It depends on the, the level of imitation. That either it will mean totality or it will mean that you have imitated them outwardly and you have a sin. You have imitated them <clears throat> with actions while you're still something different. And this is the danger of this hadith, as we talk about it, that it has two meanings. Either outwardly, you are like a people meaning in custom, and action, and sentiment, and dress, while you're something else, or it could mean you're like those people in sentiment, and ideology, and, and your way of thinking, and dress, and customs, and inwardly you're like them too. And this is one of the dangers, the ulama, when they talk about this hadith, that this statement the Prophet ﷺ presents is that if you imitate the people, you may go all the way to the level of loving them, wanting to be like them, and inwardly in your heart claiming that. So the Prophet ﷺ, when he said, Men tashabbaha bi qawmen fohu aminhum. Whosoever imitates the people, whosoever imitates the people, then he is from amongst them. Imam Abi Dawood, he collected this hadith in the chapter of Libas. Akhwajuhu Imam Abi Dawood fi Kitab al Libas, in the book of dress. So it's befitting for a person to understand that it has to do with the dress of a person. So, the statement of the Prophet ﷺ when he said, whosoever imitates the people, then he's from amongst them. The first way that we look at this as it relates to dress code. And there's a rule in the religion. Fiha <clears throat> qawa'id. Fisharia, yani that you can dress, you can wear the clothing of the people. This is a sunnah. If you go amongst the people, that you can wear the clothing of those people. For example, if you are in a place, and this is related to the men, where they wear the ma'wis, uh, or they call it izar, the waist wrap, and they wear a shirt then it is okay for a man who doesn't wear that to wear that because he's amongst those people to blend in. Likewise, if a person is in a place where they wear, for example, designed African clothing, it is permissible, it is from the way of the prophet that it's okay for you to wear that African clothing. So now if we transfer that to our day and time, when you talk about pants, western style pants, shirts, western style shirts, caps, western style caps, then there's a big controversy because this general rule includes any land that you go to. <clears throat> home. So as long as it's not a particular dress that's linked to those people. 
malam yakun fi libasihim ma yahram Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so as long as in that dress is not something that's prohibited so the first thing so as long as the clothing itself it is a clothing that is not something that's particular to those people for example we make the the, the issue of fashion jeans while some people will say well jeans everybody wears them they wear them in Egypt they wear them in Lebanon I've seen somebody wearing them even in Saudi Arabia in Mecca play yet but we're talking about fashion jeans if we talk about <clears throat> the name and the different uh, types of jeans like today they have skinny jeans back in the 70s you used to have the bell bottom jeans they were wide at the bottom <clears throat> and then prior to that they had jeans that were straight leg you know so all of these different type of styles these are styles that someone may say it is something that is a particular fashion for particular people if you talk about just the fabric itself a jean jacket a jean um, abaya somebody might buy jean material get a jean thobe a kufi then someone can say okay it's just the material but we know when people buy for example jardash or calvin klein these are some old name jeans levi's um, now they have gucci and louis vuitton this and then we know this is a fashion this is a fashion that's privy to celebrities privy to the non-muslim particularly so this is an example when we talk about a clothing that is particular to a people or those clothing they have something whether in their nature or in the wearing of them that becomes haram such as something that shows your form yani al bantalon yani youth haru yani surat al jism pants that show distinctively the private parts and we mentioned before imam al albani who used to talk about as it relates to the man praying and what lie this is not to make someone feel uh, out of place or uncomfortable. We're talking about what the Prophet said meant to Shabbaha be men for who are minhum. Whoever imitates the people, then he's of them. Either in custom, you share a custom like them. Either in uh, dress, you share a dress code like them. Either um, in a, a idea or a belief, or even in, even in ibadah, worship. Because the Prophet mentioned this in a general way. So if we take, for example, the issue of um, how you wear the particular clothing, for example, a person, he may say, okay, I have jeans, and I see the issue of jeans to be general. But if that person is wearing those <laughs> jeans tight to the point that in his prayer, if he was to make rukua, you can see definely his, his, his buttocks, his rear, defined. Or you can see the front part of his private part then this would be considered haram so this part of the hadith <coughs> where you talk about wearing something that's customary and being okay doesn't fit because it is prohibited to pray with the aura the, the shape of the person's body showing hatta yani madha rijal even be the men so this is something that when the prophet sallallahu alaihi mentioned 1400 odd years ago he knew that people will come and they will imitate in this fashion. Likewise, <clears throat> Sheikh Ben Baz, he has an opinion about the baseball cap. And this is not because he doesn't know about the fashion and the custom, but well, lie, imagine you're in a place where this is odd to your land. We grew up in America, baseball cap, we could probably say it's a general clothing because, you know, people wore them just you know, to wear a baseball cap. They, they didn't always see it as a fashion. Sometimes they did. But imagine you're in the Arabian <coughs> Peninsula. You're in a place that 
They have no baseball teams. They have no baseball fans. And a purse is wearing a, a Philadelphia uh, Phillies baseball cap, a Cardinals baseball cap, a New York Yankees baseball cap. And then not only to mention he's wearing it, he has it on backwards. Or he has it, as we used to say, cocked ace deuce to the side. Anyone who knows about this culturally will say, Man that this falls in line with this hadith. And this was the position of Imam bin Bas, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, as it relates to something we will say, oh, that's, that's petty or insignificant, but let's take a look at this for real. And then you have, Wallah <coughs> Musta'an, the Mada issue of customs. Wallah, many people, I heard some people that even I respect, they have you know, more knowledge than me, mashallah, they have uh, more students than me. I benefit from their lessons. But they have an opinion that if a person is saying, hey, yo, hey, yo, and, you know, like, w w what's up, you know, m you know, dog, or, you know, all of this slang that is from our culture is okay. But the Prophet said, man, the shepherd had become a form in him. What's the origin of, hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo? Your rap magazine, your rap video, we know this came from the rappers and the celebrities. But you find the Muslims, well, lie because it, it, it became widespread doesn't mean that it may not still fall under this hadith. Man, the shabbat had become for who Hey, yo, what's up, Ah? Allah must No, for the Muslim, you should say, Salamu alaikum. Even as a custom, well, lie, the ulama, they said, you shouldn't greet the Muslim by saying, Sabahu khair, which in English it means good morning. They say, you shouldn't say that first when you meet the Muslim. But in our culture, Hi, good morning. It's proper. But for the Muslim, for our way, our culture, our deen is to say, Assalamu alaikum. Then if you want, you know, khair and kif halak, kif asbahta, good morning. How was your morning? Labas. <coughs> but you know, need to initiate, you know, sabahu khair, good morning, and then say, Assalamu alaikum. Man tashabah be coming for who men home. Whoever imitates the people is from amongst them. And this is a serious hadith of the Prophet ﷺ because as Imam Ibn Saul al Uthaymin, he said, you have two ways. A person will imitate a person and not fully be from amongst them. But outwardly, you see the action. وَنِيَّتُهُ يَعْنِي خَفِي فِي قَلْبِهِ لَا نَعْرِفُهُ And his reason behind it, his aim, his goal, you know, all of this we say, intention, goal, his aim, his reason, objective, his why is doing it, we don't know, unless we ask him. But we see outwardly this action. It's still upon <coughs> us to say, for that person, yani nasiha, wa amruhu ilallah, and his intention is to Allah, to barakah, wa ta Allah will deal with him. But for sure, when someone imitates a people, outwardly, you see it. But the fear is, you would start to not only imitate them, but to love them. And once you start to love a person, or people, or their ways, then now, this is the issue that Allah Musta'an definitely will take a person over and make a person perhaps totally like those people. And this is why even when it comes to Ahlul al bidah that the ulama, they are strict against imitating people of innovation. And we don't mean homemade innovation, like we found in the last 20, 30 years, where when people don't like you, or they want to marginalize you, or they want, yani, 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 they, they want to yani, make thorough or and pilah bats, they want to overthrow you and take the seat, then they label you innovator. We're not talking about that. A homemade uh, uh, instant bidah, you know, where you pour in a, in a cup and mix it with water, and now he, here's the innovator. No, we're talking about real life innovation. Real life innovation. Like sitting saying, who, 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 a million times. None of the companions did that. And even linguistically, it doesn't make sense. You just say he, he, he. Which he are you talking about? <laughs> 
Are you talking about a human? Are you talking about a, 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 a deity? Are you talking about a law? So even grammatically, it doesn't make sense to just sit in the name of praising the law and say, who, who, who? But what well, lie? Some people will say it makes me feel spiritual. It makes me feel good. I feel closer to Allah. They may give you all kinds of explanations. But from Salam Semen Tashabah woman, whoever imitates the people, he's of those people. And likewise, this is, as, as uh, uh, some ulama, they said, this is a warning to stay away from imitating people that's bad. The flip side of the coin, it's an incentive. It's an encouragement to imitate the righteous. It's an incentive. It's an encouragement to imitate the righteous. Imitate a salihin, those who are from our pious predecessors. Why? Because the more you do something, the more you become good at it, and the more you become good at it, the more you like it. And that's why the Prophet warned you about imitating people because you will either be partially from amongst them and your custom, your ideas and your harakat, your movement and your uh, 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 um, your dress libas, or you will become totally like them to the point even in your worship even yani, in your what's in your heart, you will become like them and this the Prophet he prohibited us from in, in many occasions as the Prophet mentioned, Latin Allah, Allah, Yehuda, and Nasara, it took the Kubura and Biahim and Mosajid, or Kemakal, that Allah has placed a great sin and a curse upon those Jews and Christians. And look at this they took the graves of their prophets and turned them into Mosajid. How many of the Muslims have imitated those people in that? As we have masajid. Wallahi, I don't know if they have did this in America. I've heard some people have mentioned the probability and the possibility of this in America. But for sure, outside of America, people have built and constructed places of worship over the grave so that now the grave is inside the masjid. Prophet Salem prohibit that you do this because the one who prays in the masjid, imagine we're praying and you see the lump in the ground under the carpet. That's the person's grave, the dead person. And you're facing that person who's in the direction of the Qibla and you're praying. Salatul Maghrib, Salatul Isha, Salatul Fajr, Zuhr, Wal Asr. All of that salat. Is blown because you're praying to somebody in the grave. And unless there's a wall between you and that person or a fence between you and that person, you cannot pray, as Sheikh Mukbil mentioned, towards a deceased. How about now he's in the masjid? Well, the Prophet prohibits you from doing this in the first place. So, this is an example of imitating somebody where we have imitated those prior nations. The Jews and the Christians. The same thing, Imam al Albani, he mentioned this about putting the ladies in a small room in the back of the masjid. He said, This is bid'ah. He said, And some people argue, well, the women today are not like the women in the time of the Prophet. The women today are not like the women in the time of the Prophet. So we have no choice because they come to the masjid. Maybe she has on a jacket, a pretty jacket, and she's pretty, you know. And she has on what we like to talk about, again, these skinny jeans. Maybe she has, and her feet with henna or fingernail polish. Maybe she has on something that she thinks is a uh, 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 jilbab, but it's not considered jilbab. It's not considered you know, that type of dress where you see her, her, her calf and like this. So let's say the solution, just make a small little hub, or a room, that's for the women, 
close them off from the man, and we're good. But the Prophet Sallam, wallahi, the women were beautiful in his time like they're beautiful now. They had decoration and different <coughs> things like our women have today, but they prayed behind the men. But they came out dressed accordingly. So this, again, another way we imitate the people of the book, making special concession, a special room, you know, changing the ahkam of ibadah and our masajid men tashabbahi bikomen who are men, you know, except if there's no room at all for the women. Then it's okay, many ulama say to have masjid and nisa. A masjid is just for the women, where they pray, they have the rules, but in a masjid where the women and the men can fit, and a masjid where the women and the men, they do pray and have events, then the women should be put in a little cubby hole or in a small room locked away in order to <clears throat> justify the fitna of dress code, the fitna of imitation, the fitna <laughs> of <clears throat> being like of Salam is talking about the likes of this hadith, imitating the people. As to barrach, you know, showing your beauty like this, is imitation of the kuffar. Naam. Wa kadalik, naam. Ma da, from amongst the ways also, imitation of a people, wallah musta'an, how we eat. How we eat. And this is not to say that eating from one plate or one bowl, or one dish is haram. No. But the Prophet Sallam along with the ways to eat. As the people don't know the etiquettes, they want to eat communal, but they don't know that from Salem prohibit that you drop food back in the <coughs> food dish from your mouth. <coughs> and from Salem prohibit that, yani, Allah musta'an, you eat with your left hand. And from Salem prohibit that when you're eating in the communal tray, that you eat from what's to the right and the left, but you eat, as the Prophet said, eat what's yani, closest to you. Now, but many people, they don't eat like this anymore. Why? Because this is old fashioned, or this is, you know, embarrassing, you know, to eat from one platter. This is, you know, nasty. Like, you know, I'm not eating behind that person. He might have a disease, or he might have this or that. If someone is sick, and we know that he's sick, and you want to take that precautionary measure, that's one issue. But simply because of <laughs> Western influences, influences from other people, then this is what the Prophet is talking about. <laughs> Always eating with utensil. And feeling if you eat with, the, as we say, the naked hand, it's ill-mannered, or it's barbaric. This is from the way of the Prophet to eat with your hand. Well, if you eat with the utensil, no problem. But some people, again, because of imitation, then it has become something in the heart that they love from those people, so much so that it takes them to the level of <clears throat> believing and feeling inwardly like those people. So this hadith of the Prophet man Whosoever imitates the people, then he's of them, it carries one or two meanings. Either that you share in the qualities, you share in the customs, you share in the mannerisms, you share in the dress code, you share in the ideas, you share in the different movements and things that you do in life with those people. While the Muslims, we have our own code of ethics. Yani shara'an wa man haja. Allah said unto each one of the nations who have given them their set of principles, rules, belief, and their ways and customs. Or you are totally like them, even as it relates to your belief. And this is the scary part when Allah Tabaraku wa ta'ala said, Wa man nasi man yakulu aman na billahi wa bil yom al akhi wa ma hum bi mu'minin. And many of the people from amongst them, you will find those who say, we believe. Meaning in Allah and His Messenger. But Allah said, <coughs> while they claim they believe in Allah in the last day, they are not believers. <coughs> Talking about what's in the people's hearts. So this is the hadith of Ibn Umar. 
which it comes in the Sunan of Abi Dawood, whosoever imitates a people, he is from amongst them. Wallah Musta'an, Hasbunallah wa Nitma Wakil, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his safety and his protection, for his forgiveness. <coughs> Naam. How much time before the Adhan? Fifteen minutes. Fifteen minutes. Fifteen minutes. Fifteen Yes. And I know that there's a lot of Israel, and so when the person complains, sometimes people support that they say, <coughs> it's actually harming some young brothers and sisters. So what would you be talking to them instead of um, the adults and supporting people who are warm and coming to each other about the Lord? Now, this is something that raises flags when you buy people. You all right? Alhamdulillah, Allah heal you. When then you buy from people, the issue of where does the money go to, who supports who, and so forth. And this is a little bit difficult because some people, for example, I remember we were in Yemen. La hawla wa la illa billah. We had the, the tall old glass Coca-Cola bottles. Anybody remember those bottles? You take the open it and you pop it. They're famous in the Muslim countries and in the overseas. You may find them here every now and then, but they still have them over there. And so if you turn the bottle to the side, the fancy, what they would call cursive writing, Coca-Cola, it looks like when you look through the back of the label that it says la mecca la muhammad but when you turn it back around it says coca-cola so the brothers somebody turned it and was looking and said wait a minute this is the trick of the yahud they said la mecca la muhammad there's no mecca no muhammad so and you're talking about people that are sitting with ulama scholars like studying seven days a week Hardcore books, Tafsir Ibn Kathir, Fatul uh, Bari, Shir Sahil Bukhari. Uh, we're studying like big major books, you know, of the religion. Somebody has a mentality like this. So they knocked on everybody's door, you know, and said, Look, La Mecca, La Muhammad. And they turned the bottle so you could look and see. Oh, man. So they said, That's it. When I drink no more Coca Cola, haram. So let's start spreading this <laughs> through the village amongst the people, you know. And so the next day, we took her to the sheikh. The sheikh, he laughed. He said, subhanAllah, he said, you know, even if this is the case, what harm does this make in the religion? Because they said, no Mecca, no Muhammad. He said, and likewise, you know, if we say we're going to boycott everything that somebody <laughs> makes or sells, then we have to boycott the whole world because the whole world is controlled by the non-Muslims. So this concept of boycotting, yeah, I mean, if it's something clearly tied to something Mu'ayyan, something particular like homosexuality, and we shouldn't you know, need, uh, be apologetic because some Muslims feel like, oh, why are you talking about homosexuality? This is, you know, democracy or you know I know some Muslims that are gay how could you directly court something support something that is clearly wrong so that's one issue but something is you know like the nature of clothing and if I buy from this company you know they said they hate the Muslims then I'm supporting them it's, it's kind of difficult or if this person He's giving monies to uh, 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 the, 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 the people who are against Islam. Then if I buy this from him, I'm supporting that cause. Not necessarily. As the son said, That your action is by intention. You see? So this is you know, something that it does raise flags. If it's something particular and you know that it's going 
100% to that thing and that thing only, then yes, don't support it. But something broad like clothing, who makes the clothes, who designs it, they give a portion of their money to this organization or this country, and these, con these countries are against the Muslims, then that's a little bit difficult, and Allah knows best. Now, so inshallah tabarakul wa ta'ala, the next hadith is the hadith of Ibn Abbas, and we won't take it because it's the long hadith where the Prophet said that uh, Abla ibn uh, Abbas said the Prophet kuntu radifin Rasulullah I was riding behind the Prophet on the same animal uh, and the Prophet yani, <coughs> he said to me oh young boy and this hadith indicates that Abdullah ibn Abbas had matured because he called him Ghulam. And many of the ulama that said Ghulam means that person has tamyiz. He can distinguish between, between right and wrong. He's at the age of pubit, where he's accountable. And this hadith is a long hadith where the Prophet ﷺ said, Ihfad Allah, yani, ah, If you protect the and preserve the <coughs> commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah will preserve you. Naam. And if you preserve Allah's rights and regulations and rules, meaning if you do them, if you respect them, you adhere to them, then you will find Allah in front of you. Some ulama, they said in front of you, mean Allah would be there to protect you and not that you would look and see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And others said that Allah will be in front of you, meaning on the day of judgment. It will be in your favor. Allah will be there, yani, accepting your deeds. And then the Prophet he said, yani, إذا, إذا, uh, So if you seek any assistance, then seek assistance in Allah. Seek assistance from Allah, tabarakahu wa ta'ala. This does not mean that you can't seek assistance from humans, although there are some conditions. But here, the main thing, Allah Tabarakul wa Ta'ala's Prophet is telling and teaching, the one who seeks their assistance from Allah only is not like the one who doesn't seek assistance from Allah. The one who seeks assistance from Allah only is not like the one who seeks assistance from Allah and his creation. The one who seeks assistance from Allah is not like the one who doesn't seek assistance from Allah Tabarakul wa Ta'ala. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, And if you ask, ask Allah. Wallahi, if your car breaks down, think about it. Do you grab the phone and call so and so and text so and so right away? Or do you raise your hand and say, Oh Allah, help me in this calamity? Then you call so and so. Do you seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do you ask Him? Or you go straight to the creation. And the Prophet ﷺ, he <clears throat> taught us the issue of dua. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said the dua, yani hu al ibada. The dua is an act of worship, meaning something that Allah Azza wa Jal ordered you to do, and He only orders you to do something that He loves. And if He loves it, then it is something that He's pleased with. As for the hadith, a dua mukhul ibada then du'a is the central <coughs> of, 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 of worship or the, 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 the central processing unit of worship, then some ulama, they say this hadith is da'if in the wording, but the meaning could mean yani, what it's implying, that du'a is one of the main parts of worship. And you think about, in the Fatiha, you praise Allah, you acknowledge his names and attributes, you acknowledge the day of judgment and that deeds will be, be repaid based upon the intention and the nature of those deeds. You uh, 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 acknowledge that worship should be only for Allah, none other than Allah, and seeking help is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then you have what? Dua. Yaka na'budu wa yaka nasta'een. After that, ihdina sarat al mustaqeen and some people think this is a command to Allah, but Sheikh Uthaymin said, no, 
and the in the sense of the language, this is the yani, uh, 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 dua. This is dua. So this yani, where the Prophet is mentioning, if you ask, ask Allah. It doesn't mean you can't ask human beings, but you should only ask human beings after you ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. As the Prophet he mentioned the Hadith of Jabir ibn Abdullah in the Sahih of Muslim, either Hamma Ahaduko. If any one of you decide in an affair, for you suddenly rakaatain, ghayra fariba, let them pray two rakaa, and the scholar said ghayra yani fariba means farida, fajr, fajr, zuhur, asr, maghrib, isha. What do you normally have with those salah? You have an adhan and a iqama. So the 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 al qon ghayra farida. Means you don't call it Adhan or Qam, you just pray two raka'ah, basically. Meaning you couldn't pray Fajr, and then at the end of your Fajr, make Tashahud, and then say, I'm going to make Istikhara. No, you can't do it like that. Istikhara has to be separate from your five daily prayers. So the point here, the Prophet taught you that anytime you get ready to make a decision, we'll make this Salat, Salat al Istikhara, where you're going to ask Allah. The point you're going to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for and concerning that issue because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He knows as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, Asa and takuhu shay'an wa huwa khayru laku. Maybe you will dislike a thing, but it's good for you. Wa asa and tuhibu shay'an wa huwa shuru laku. And maybe you will like something that's bad for you. Maybe you will dislike something that's good for you. And maybe you will like something that's bad for you. And Allah said, Wallahu ya'lamu wa antum la ta'lamun. Allah, he knows why you all don't know. So the issue of dua, asking Allah, seeking Allah's uh, uh, assistance in this hadith, the Prophet was telling a little boy. And they said, Ghulam could mean nine, ten, eight, like this. But sometimes when we talk about our youth, our children, the young generation say, oh, they're just kids. Let them play. No, they don't need to learn and do all of that. You're depriving them of their childhood. So the Prophet was telling uh, a, one of the premier scholars of his time, Abdullah ibn Abbas, who was a young boy, this heavy advice. Keeping obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in front of you. Keeping it with you, doing it. Allah will be with you. He will protect you. You will be a benefit from your own deeds on the day of judgment. If you seek assistance, seek assistance in Allah. This doesn't mean that you can't seek assistance in humans, but don't forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you ask, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then for Salam, he said, and if the whole humanity gathered together to benefit you, to make something happen for you beneficial, that would not come to pass except Allah had already wrote that for you, that benefit. And if they came together to harm you, this is the real punchline. If they came together to harm you, the whole of the humanity, they could not harm you with anything except Allah already wrote it for it to come down upon you. The pen has been lifted and the pages have been dried now. The hadith in Akhwajuhu, Imam Tirmadiyu. And this is the 19th hadith of Imam Nawawi's 40 hadith, Hadith al Azim, a tremendous hadith for the Prophet told Abdullah ibn Abbas as a young boy these parts of the religion. Nasallahu tabaraka wa ta'ala and yuthabbitana ala al haqq. We ask Allah to make us firm upon the truth. Wa nasallahu subhanahu wa ta'ala and we ask Allah to bless us to preserve our religion and our worldly life that we have to live. We ask Allah to bless us to preserve our religion and our worldly life that we have to live. We ask Allah to bless us in our life, our everyday life and our deen. 
ونسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يحق الحق الحق ويبك للباطل إنه سميع الدعاء we ask Allah to make the truth seen as truth and falsehood low on the land. Verily, He is the one who hears the invocation. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala rasulihi al-kareem wa ala alihi wa ashabihi al-jama'i. Now, and this will be the last class until Ma'adha, the 3rd of November, Sunday, November the 3rd. Bi'athinah tabaraku wa ta'ala wa billahi tawfiq. Any questions, comments, or corrections? Finish. Finish.